So I have this basic component that will load a series of people from the Star Wars API. And that's what we've got here. We've got three pieces of state. We've got a people array loading and then a page count, which allows for this load more. On component mount, we call this.getPeople. Get people will actually go ahead, set the loading state to true, go ahead and make the fetch request, and then update component state. Render just goes ahead and renders the item, and then the load more, or the, the footer of this flat list is either a uh, loading indicator or a load more button. So now we can go ahead and actually start migrating this to use hooks. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is look at our render method and figure out what are the, pe the pieces of state we're using. So we've got this.state.people. Actually, that would just be a good way. Highlight this.state. So we've got people, we've got loading, and that looks like it. So those are two pieces of state that we'll need to make sure we track. So to start this migration, what I'll do is just copy this entire uh, return from the render function, and I'll go ahead and comment out the rest of this component. Then go on to down here and create a new functional component. When you're using uh, hooks, you need to use a functional component. You can't use a class-based component. Okay, with that done, we can now go ahead and start setting up these pieces of state we've got. And to do that, we'll go ahead and import the use state hook from React. And we can go ahead and start adding these in here. So to do this, what we'll do is use the array to structuring. So we've got use state, and then we need to pass an initial value to use state. So this one's going to be people. So we'll just pass an empty array, just like we did in uh, the initial state. So we've got people, and then set people. Next, we know we'll have loading. So we'll go ahead and grab loading and set loading. And again, we'll use state, and by default, this will be true. And one more piece of state that we're going to have to use is if we look at the this.getPeople, you can see we're actually using this.state.page uh, to, to determine which page of state we would actually grab. So we'll go ahead and initialize this as well. So we've got page, we'll have set page, and then use, page, or use state is one. Okay, so to actually go ahead and replace this component or this getPeople, which is being called by component did mount, we'll want to import the use effect hook from react and use effect is going to give us things very much like life cycle methods of a typical typical component uh, component did mount component did update uh, component should update component will amount so on and so forth so we'll go ahead and start using that and to do this this will just take a function and inside of here we'll go ahead and grab that fetch statement Inside of here, we'll start making our changes. So we've got our request to the API. Instead of this.state.page, we're going to change this to page. And then in the this.set state, where we're going to be setting things from, And that should be good to go here. Next thing we'll want to do is down here in our return, we want to replace anything that's this dot set state. So we got that, and this, and we'll just go ahead and comment out this set state. We'll come back to that in a moment. So I refresh this. You can see we're starting to get all of these requests coming in. And we're actually going to time out here in a second. So I'm going to comment this out and refresh it. Um, so what's happening here is use effect is being called every single time something changes in state, which is happening every single time use effect is being called because of set people and set loading. So with use effect, what we can do is very much like using a should component update or component should update, whichever way it actually is phrased. Um, so the first argument to use effect is this function of what should happen. The second is an array of variables that use effect should track to determine should we update. So if one of these values changes, then we should re we should call use effect once again. 
And in this case, the only time we're going to want to rerun this uh, effect, this fetch, is when the page variable counts, and that's after the initial run. So all we can do is pass in an array here, and we'll pass that page. We can save it, and now what's going to happen is it's just going to call it that one time. Page hasn't changed, so we're not going to load more. Now, if we do want to load more, what we can do is say down here in our where we were calling it again before, we can say set page, and we're going to call it, or use page plus one because it's a number. And now we can go ahead and load more, and we can continue to add to this list as it goes on. So at this point, we've duplicated our functionality, and we saved a few lines compared to the other thing. But what's really powerful about this is say you want to have this list somewhere else, or you just don't want all of this logic in your component, you want to let your component focus on rendering data. What we can do here is create a custom effect instead, rather a custom hook. So to do that, just above my component, you could put another file if you wanted to. I'm going to call this use swappy people. Okay, and what we're going to do is just take everything we've got up here, go ahead, pull this out. And basically, we need to look down here, what information do we need to make this actually render something. So if we look here, we we're going to need people, we're going to need loading. And then we're going to need a way to load more people. So we'll just go ahead and call that load more. So what we know now is that from here, we're going to have to return the people data, which we're already getting. We're going to have to return loading, which once again, we've already got right here. And that's going to update and do everything it needs to. And finally, this load more function, what we can do is say, create a new function. And inside of that load more function, we're going to go ahead and call set people to people plus one, just like we were doing before. And the reason I'm doing this is to kind of hide an implementation detail of this effect from the actual component that's calling it. All we care about is that we're loading more people. So we're just going to return a function that describes that clearly. And then that load more function of our hook uh, can actually go ahead and do whatever it needs to in order to load more. With that, we can go ahead and refactor this. And since we're returning an object from our effect, we'll go ahead and grab people, loading, and load more. And that's coming from our use swappy people. And that doesn't take a default value if you needed one. You can pass it in just like you would uh, otherwise. And the only change we need to make down here is instead of calling a set page, all we need to do do is call load more, not make a typo. And with that, you can see we've got some sort of issue. Ah, okay. And the issue we've got is that down here, I'm calling set people and not set page. So make sure you fix that typo. And now when we load more, once again, I've still got another typo. This should be set page, page plus one load it, and we've got this reusable piece of code. So now if we look at what our actual component looks like, we've just got this use swappy people hook, it's returning people, the loading status and a load more function. So we can just focus on rendering it. And then we've got this separate function up here, this hook, that's going to contain all of its state uh, for people loading and the page, it's going to go ahead, make requests when it needs to make them. And we can go ahead and reuse that. So that's kind of the process of refactoring a component from using a typical component state that we've all seen and used over the years into the new Hooks API. And now with the latest version of React Native, which is uh, 057, I believe right now, sorry, 059. 059 is where uh, React Hooks actually came into React Native. Uh, we've now got this ability to use it and try it. And you can see how it just starts to simplify things and uh, simplify our components. So I hope you found that valuable when you have a point where you want to try out hooks or make a migration or you've got a new component you're making. Uh, go ahead and give it a shot. Remember though, using hooks isn't required. Component state's going to still continue to work. There are instances where that makes more sense, but using hooks can be a bit more simple and it's an alternative way of managing state in your component. So 
Thank you for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.